that's when we just said we said we gotta screw do it, it. Do, yeah let's do this and we let everything go yeah, so we, we sent out our culling we sent, sent out, out our editing. editing and fully let go like yeah. but by that time I, my notes got better like yes. i had from, yeah. all from everything that you taught yeah. her in the beginning and i kind of started implementing yeah. i think we had three projects out at once four, four? Oh, yeah. yeah okay we had three or four things out at once yeah, yeah. and we're like that was the oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> that's was, when we sat on the like wow oh my god we yeah, were yeah. in our house and we're like this feels great. This yeah. feels right. It was that moment that now we're like, we're so excited to go into this season knowing exactly yeah. what we had to do. It's now made us aware to start thinking about, okay, now that we have this under control, what's next? How else can we make more money? Exactly. What else can we do? When I first started my wedding photography business back in 2011, I made just $5,000 in my business. Now I bring in multiple six figures per year while working only 30 hour weeks serving my dream couples. I'm here to help you discover that it's so possible to have what you want, when you want in your business so that you can create the life you've always dreamed of and deserve. Yay! Okay, I'm so excited. I have Julian and Kelly here in my office today, and they're my second guests in real life on my podcast, so I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. And they have been freaking extraordinary with how they have been in action with what they learned in the outsourcing program that I teach. So I can't wait to dive in. I know that they said that they it's been like life-changing and a lot of things like helped them, but I haven't heard yet everything that has happened so i'm literally <laughs> finding out live just as you guys are um but before we get there before you can um get inspired by their story um i want to make sure that we can all dive into exactly who julie and kelly are and what they love to photograph and how long they've been doing it so anything that comes to mind guys you, that's part of your story okay feel free to share well i guess i'll, I'll start i'll start <laughs> so i've been doing this for julian has been doing this for <laughs> about, I want to say 16 years. Holy crap, holy. Yeah, about, I yeah. think I'm going into my 16th year. Yeah. I started when I was, I won't tell you my age, I can't, can't age myself here, but, <laughs> um, and I've been doing it for a very long time, and then about how long ago did you get into it? I started in 2012, so what's that, like? Almost, almost, almost eight years. Eight years, years. Yeah. 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 End of 2012. I yeah. won't even consider 2012, really. And then because it's like, yeah. and that's like when I was learning, like Julian taught me everything. So I was learning how to work a camera and how all the technical aspects of it. Yeah. 2014 yeah. was your official 2014, decision. 2014, May 2014, I quit my full-time job and started working full-time with Julian. Oh my gosh. And yeah. that was before the year you guys got married too. It, it was, was a few months that. before few we got months. married. Oh my God. Yeah. It that was kind of crazy. It was Impressive. a big decision. <laughs> It was an impulsive decision. It was, an, oh it was a quick impulsive decision. Are you are you guys pretty impulsive, or is one of you more impulsive than the other? Um, that's a good question. I am not impulsive. I no? I, I could act no. on impulse a little bit more than her, but I think yeah. we do just tend to overthink things a few, but uh, a few times. But yeah. I think when it comes to business, it's more like something comes in our heads. We, yeah, we do it. That's, if it's something I'm excited about, I. Yeah everything else is just it doesn't matter i will just jump on board and, and you have this like belief that everything will just work out work itself out i'll yeah. figure it out yeah that's amazing yeah we we do that it's <laughs> amazing that's that's really inspiring because yeah. a lot of people are just like scared of the what ifs and then yeah. they stay stuck because they don't know so that's yeah. really, really cool that you did that that's yeah. awesome yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't think my fam thought it was cool, but oh. <laughs> it's all good now. <laughs> no, it's worked out. Everything. <laughs> Her and I together, I, I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for 16 years and I've had a lot of great people work alongside me. Yeah. And it's just that. And I've, and I've done it alone. And then, But once she came and became Julian and Kelly, it was just a totally different vibe, a totally different experience that we, we gave to our couples. And just us being together made everything so real and so comfortable. So yeah. awesome. it was totally different. And yeah. things became more real after we got married. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, what you guys told me about. Yeah. Because now that I'm engaged, I'm like, I, f I see a whole other side to it. And then yeah. you guys are like, wait till you even get married. That's a whole other level, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to see how you feel after you get married. Yeah. How you feel about weddings and what's important to be documented and Exactly. Whatnot. New, yeah. Whole because, new perspective. Yeah, it just opens your eyes more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. But 
That's, us. <laughs> that's our that's our that's how we started. Yeah, that's how you started. Yeah. And what what do you guys love like for, like why did you guys get into weddings actually? Why are you guys passionate? About Shall I start this again? You have to start it. You started with weddings. <laughs> I, I kind of I kind of jumped on board. Okay, long story <laughs> short, I got into it because my dad was a fo- was a photographer and videographer and he'd been doing it for uh, at that time I don't know but in total he'd done it for 35 years before yeah. he retired wow and uh, he told me to come one summer and just work with him and I never I never had any idea that I wanted to be a photographer growing up it was just not that I didn't care for it or think negatively towards it but it was like my dad did it yeah and I just wanted to go in a different direction right but then I started doing it and I don't know. I I know it sounds cheesy or cliche, but I love love. Oh, yeah. And it felt like there could not be another profession that was more suited for who I am as a person, how I grew up and my life. And and that's why I started it. And that's kind of the fundamentals to what we do today. It's a lot about just loving love and real life and people and the connections that we build with our couples. And, And that's that's what makes it so rewarding for us. Yeah. That's really cool. I think for me, like I wasn't sure I was going to do this. I just really like to learn a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, yes. Kelly so, came from a completely different background. Guys, I was a relationship manager at TD insurance. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so very different. Yeah. Um, people used to tell me I used to cut people's heads off when I took pictures. Oh like, my God. I was not good. <laughs> um, amazing. <laughs> so for me, it was like Julian had said, do you want to learn? Like, here's a camera. Come play. Do mm-hmm. you want to learn? And for me, I just really like to learn a lot of different things. So I was like, yes, I want to learn. Like, I'm Mm going to do this. It's a challenge and I am going to do it and I have to do it well. Um, So that's how I started. (laughs) And then, like, just seeing how he was and how he was with our clients and the difference he was making and the gratitude that people had for him every time he delivered photos. So that always kind of drew me in. It was like people would come, they'd pick up their photos, we'd get mess or he'd get messages saying, <laughs> I can't believe this, like, thank you so much. You've basically captured everybody. You've given us like memories for a lifetime. Like, can't thank you enough. And for me, that's what kind of drew me in more was we are capturing memories for these people for many years to come, for their grandchildren to see. So that's why I kind of I think that's why I stuck with it. Yeah. And I have a thing where I really like to make people happy. Oh, yeah. So that's if awesome. I could be there and make them happy on their wedding day, then that makes me happy. So did you kind of like compare like, oh, where you were at in your like job career to like feeling like that's incredible. You get so much gratitude. You get to be surrounded by love all the time. You get to make mm-hmm. people extra happy. Like 100%. that it just all of that. You're like, what am I doing? Question. Right. A hundred percent. I think so. <sighs> I don't think I was ever meant to be a desk person, mm-hmm. like or a nine to fiver. Yeah, <laughs> that that's always like in the back of my mind. It was always like I need to do my own thing. I need to do something for me. And I think my whole life I've been trying to find something that I can do that would change someone else's life. And I know I'm not changing the world in any sort of means by documenting their wedding, but I am changing their lives in a way. You're changing my life too. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, because you get to work together. We Honestly, it's yeah. amazing. It's like, People ask us all the time, yeah. like, how do you do it? You're with each other 24 yeah. hours a day, seven days a week. But I mean, I'll, I'll get super cheesy with you now. Do it. Like, yeah. I'll get cheesy. Life is short. Yeah. And there's nobody else that could say that they get to spend their entire day with the person they love. So... I could say I'm blessed. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> Sorry. Shucks. No, it's no, seriously, because that is literally what life is about. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping photographers find how they can have more. Like, for example, it's not the case maybe for a lot of photographers that they can mm-hmm. work with their spouse, right? Yeah. yeah. So how can I'm like, there must be a way for photographers to actually not be burnt out all the time. So yeah. exactly what you're saying right now, it's like even if like a photographer can't work with their spouse there is a way for you guys to spend more time together 100%. so like just you talking about that your like reason why you left and why you choose to work together not only are you passionate about documenting memories but then you get to do it together mm-hmm. it's like the ultimate it makes me want to cry because that's what life is about <laughs> i'm like the biggest mush again i love love too right like same thing so yeah that's incredible yeah. and that's like why for me i went on this 
outsourcing journey because I was working too many hours and not spending enough time with yeah. Rory or my family and friends. Yeah. And I'm like, what the F? Like I got into starting my own business to have more freedom, but I ended up working more than I would a nine to five actually. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, this isn't, this is something's wrong. Something's broken here. So like, yeah, I, I love the why that you guys have because it's like kind of the same why I have. Yeah. <laughs> it's very easy to consume yourself in this job. Yeah. Yes. So I would love to ask you guys, so before you found out about like how to implement outsourcing, before you found out about my course, like what was life like? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was, it was getting to the point where it was, uh, it was pretty stressful. Hold on, before you go there. Okay, go, go, go So ahead, go before ahead. you go there, I just said we get to spend 24 hours a day together, seven yes. days a week. Yeah. And I felt like... We didn't get to spend time together. Correct. If that makes any sense whatsoever. I would see him every single day. We would be together every single day. We would talk about work a lot, but we wouldn't be together. It wasn't something to do with our relationship. Yeah. You know, like date nights used to happen once a month and then they happen like once every six months. You know what I mean? Like it just, it just became us existing together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'd be sitting on the couch watching TV together, watching The Bachelor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with laptops you love on the love. Lap. Yeah, exactly. Because we love it's love. It's true. It's yeah. true. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. You're like, I need to watch The Bachelor. I need to be with my love. And I need to edit love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was our life. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And yeah. Uh, our laptops would be on our laps while we're while we're doing it. And that's kind of kind of became normal yeah for a while and we just said like this something needs to change and we don't we've known for a long time that something needs to change how long do you think well okay like i said i've been doing this for 16 years and you know everything's been fine and you know the you just start you start the 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 longer you're in it the more you learn the more you uh you want to do and change and you want to evolve in your business so once that stuff started becoming more prominent which is probably been the last f- few years yeah um it it really started to take a toll on us so like yeah. it's it's been like this in terms of the stress yeah. for maybe i want to say three four years yeah where it yeah it and, and it would be like every year would come january february before the season would start and we'd be like okay it's gonna be different exactly this year. <laughs> yeah. oh my god yes <laughs> we try to implement it's, things we yeah. we talk about it but then it just you get that rush in the summer and then it just piles up and yeah. then September, October, November, December, you're just trying to catch up and trying to just stay ahead of the yeah. game yeah. or at least on your target as best yeah. you can. Yep. And that's what's called your business running you. Right? Exactly. Yes. And it's almost like every January, how everyone makes a New Year's resolution. Yeah. I'm going to work out January 1st. I'm going to the gym. Yeah. Nobody does it. But for us, it's like, hey, I did it. No I'm actually, joking. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, like, you must so be far, the 1%. So far, two, two months in, I'm on it, but... Good job. So you're the one, yeah, it's like one percent. Yeah, I know people, you, yeah. honestly. I know but I've hey, I've done it in the past where I didn't stick to it. So you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so with us, it was like because we were so overworked, and then um, you know, a lot of family stuff happens in November and December for us. So in January, we're dead. Yeah. yeah. So us saying yes, in January, like True. all year, we're like, January. January's the, yeah. the month. We're gonna start it, we're gonna look into what we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna change things, things are gonna be better next year. <laughs> And then January comes and you're exhausted. Yeah. And you're trying to like catch up with life and you're just like, oh, well, in I don't January, you do catch anything. up on, the, on all the TV shows that you've missed. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's that's you like yearning for relaxation, right? Yeah. So you're just like catching up, Netflixing, chilling. Yeah. yeah and everything, hibernating. everything else just sounds so much more appealing than sit down and try to go plan. Totally. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like go to spa on the weekend? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's our off season. We deserve yeah, it. Sure. We grind it so hard. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So then, okay, so then when was the shift where you're like, okay, we're going to take the plunge to, like, do something about this? Okay, so last January, so, okay, what year are we in? 2020. (laughs) 2020, 2020, Okay, (laughs) so in 2018, right? I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this. 2018, (laughs) January 2018, we had done that where we had said, you know, this is going to be the year that we change things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we did not change anything. And Jan and 2018 was a very hectic year for us. Like, I don't even, I don't know. It was just terrible. Um, 
then 2019, January 2019, we were like, okay, this is it. We're changing things. Yeah. I don't know what happened and why we didn't actually focus on anything. I feel like something happened at the... Be- oh, we, we were busy actually in the beginning of the year yeah, in January. We, we, we actually through. had a lot of weddings. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then that kind of um, delayed us and yeah. we just kind of rolled into the rest of the year feeling like that. I think... Yeah. Yeah, we felt, yeah, rolled in feeling like that. And then when you're, when you posted your workshop, Julian's like, that's it. I'm done. One of us is going. Like, it was timing. I don't care it who, was like, like that's, one of us is going. That was yeah. the shift. It was yeah. when, like, we, like, yeah, I would say the last two years was yeah. when it was, has been most difficult, where it's really been kind of, you know, on this, almost pushing us over the edge. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we need to figure something out. So I'd been looking for things. It's right. been, it had been in my frame of mind to find yeah. something. But then uh, when you posted it, I'm like, this is, this sounds like what we need. It yeah. sounds right up our alley. She sounds like she has everything figured, <laughs> figured out. out yeah. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. And then it turns out we, of course, signed up for it. And Kelly ended up going to yeah. the workshop. Yeah. And it was, it. you had it a lot more figured out than we even <laughs> thought you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's kind of what was like a little bit more like, holy crap. Can I say that? Yeah. Can yeah. I you swear. Fuck okay. all that you want. <laughs> Yeah, really I have a potty mouth. And yeah, I do it. And oh. I have one too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think after the workshop, um, I went home and probably talked his ear off for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, and I was just like, like mouth dropped to the floor, and I'm like, wow, she's got it figured out, Jesus. And I think, I think that's the big thing for us. Like, I think some people are really good at creating systems, mm-hmm. right? And as much as in the last two years or so that we've been trying to figure out how to do this, yeah. I don't, I'm not good at systems. Mm-hmm. He's terrible at systems. I'm, I'm just not. I love, I love working off a system because then I thrive. I feel organized. I feel like yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm doing my things, but I don't know how to create systems. Yeah. yeah. Julian's the type of person, if he doesn't know what to do, he'll just like hire somebody. Yeah. I'm the type of person that I think I can do everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just like, I say, he says, I'm a jack of all trades. I like to learn everything. I like to get my hands involved in everything. So yeah. for me... Every time he says, I'm going to hire somebody, I'm like, I can do it. Yeah. And then, of course, I don't do it because I'm too busy. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it all <laughs> piles up. And then and then when you are doing everything, wearing all the hats, so you don't have time for you or each yes. other or friends and family. And exactly. exactly. 100%. 100%. So what were what were some of the, the steps that you started taking as soon as you learned all this new information? <laughs> Go ahead. I'll let, I'll let you start with this. It was so overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> it was overwhelming because it was October. And it was also one, a one-day workshop. It was a one-day workshop. It was like workshop. all these, this information all at once. <laughs> okay. So before I go there, can I say something yeah. else? So we've taken so many, I don't know, not so many. We've taken a lot of workshops. We've gone to a lot of conferences. We've done all that. And I feel like any time that's happened, you get a lot of information from a few different people. And at the end of it, you leave, you're overwhelmed, you have all your notes in your notebook, and then you're like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Where do I start? Like, where do I start? What do I do? And I'm not going to lie, a lot of times I don't look back at my notebook and I don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like whatever I absorbed and put into action is all I took from that. Mm -hmm. So the difference between that and your workshop was, yes, it was one day. Um, I loved your handout because I felt like I didn't need to write my stuff down. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So because I didn't need to sit there writing all the things that was coming in, were coming into my mind, I was able to focus on what you were actually saying and listen. So that was a big thing for me. And then once I took it home, like you gave us the steps. Like I knew the steps, like it was literally laid out in there. I didn't need to memorize it that day. I didn't need to write it in my book. I brought it home and it was like, this, this is what we have to do. So when I went back home, I said to him, I'm like, he's like, okay, but did she tell you like, what are the steps? And I'm like, the steps are right here. Like, I'm just opening. I'm like, these are the steps. (laughs) One, two, three, four. Like, let's just do this. And uh, so it's like, you kind of knew what, oh, Okay, so we had to pause the episode because I'm recording this on a camera and the camera stopped working. So I'm just we're just gonna start and keep keeping on continuing Kelly's point. So we're just okay. gonna keep going now. So what I was saying was okay. So when when I brought everything home and I had all the steps in what to like where to go next, it was just it seemed simple. It was like this is now easy. I don't need to 
go reference my notebooks and try to figure out what the hell I was writing and no sentence yeah. is making sense. And you said, Julian's like, what do we do next? And then you had the steps. Yeah, then I up. had all the steps yeah. there. So Well, it was like your mind was clear. When you were breaking it down for me, it wasn't like, I guess because you're when you were talking or when you guys were at the workshop, you were so focused on what you were learning that when you yes. actually explained it to me, it was just seamless. It was just like, mm. well, she does this, 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 and that. We have to do this, this, and that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> great. That's awesome. Like, it just sounded, it sounded like so simple, like, like yeah. everybody should know this yeah and we technically know a lot of it but it's just little simplicities little things that you've adjusted to just make it systemic you know what i mean yeah. like yeah. it was that's what you do no questions asked okay. yeah. yeah and that's why i call it outsourcing made easy yeah because yeah. it's literally just a step-by-step roadmap roadmap exactly. <laughs> yeah and i think the fact that you had the facebook group after Mm-hmm. And making us accountable yeah. was huge. Yeah. And I even felt bad. You can ask him. I felt bad because I wasn't even on the Facebook group as much as I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, because it was October. Like, yeah. And because it wasn't implemented before, we were behind and it was just too overwhelming. So now I had all the steps and the tools to do everything. And I was just like, I don't have time to do it. So I kind of fell into that group where you had said before, where it's like, we keep saying we don't have time. We don't have time. But if we don't make time, then we're never going to have time. Yeah. So it's a whole cycle. It's it's like, it takes that initial time investment. And in that moment, you'll feel like, okay, overwhelmed. But as soon as it starts working, you, you reach this, like you walk over this bridge and you're just like, ah, like you start seeing that you're saving time. Exactly. Yeah. So then... Which happened to us. Yes, which yeah. happened which to we, us. Which we literally felt the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we both sat on the couch. We're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, and all of that is why I had said to you before, like, and I said to him too, this workshop is worth so much more than you are selling it for because of the tools that you give everybody. It's not here's some information that I'm just telling you it's here's a step-by-step system on how to make your life better. Yeah. So that to me is more valuable than anything I've learned in the almost eight years that I've been doing this. Wow. It's that's true. amazing. And that was exactly my goal. So yeah. you sharing that makes me feel so relieved and happy and grateful. Cause that's the whole goal of mine that I had. I need to make this as easy as possible and break it down step by step. And it took way more work, but it's so worth it because now you guys are getting results. Yes. Like what is the point of me even putting together a course or a workshop if people aren't getting results? Like there's no point. Yeah. So thanks for letting me know. Your it just hits, the, hits home for me. So well, it you. hit home for us. <laughs> yeah. <Thank Yeah>. <laughs> I totally get it. You're trying to get noticed and you don't know how. I mean, raise your hand if wondering where your next booking will come from keeps you up at night. I know how that feels like. I was there once too, but I'm about to help you get clear on how to increase your bookings and inquiries. After coaching many portrait and wedding photographers, I realized they all had one thing in common that was holding them back from booking their dream clients. They didn't know how to market themselves. Once they got clarity on how to show up and put what they learned from me into action, they began to book more of their dream clients. And now I'm excited to help you do the same. So I've created a mini course called Crystal Clear Marketing to, you guessed it, help you get crystal clear on how to attract and book your dream clients. I mean, the year I implemented this, my revenue grew from $69,000 to $137,000 in just one year. So if I can do it, you can do it too. So in case you're wondering, inside of the Crystal Clear Marketing mini course, I share how to optimize your website so that more of your dream clients inquire and book, how to go from being a generalist to becoming a specialist, and why it matters, how to find out who you are at your core and fuse it fearlessly into your business. Also, how to show up on IG so you attract quality followers. That's so important. How to make the money you deserve while feeling fulfilled with your work 
and how to make marketing effortless and fun because it should be. Running our business should be fun. So what I'm so excited to share with you is that I've made this very affordable. So to get all the deets and enroll in this mini course, go to saramonica.com forward slash crystal clear. Again, head over to saramonica.com forward slash crystal clear. I cannot wait to see you in there. So what did we start with? Um, so I think, I think I left cause you had asked us like, what are you going to start with? Yeah. And I think I had said culling mm-hmm. and then I came home and I'm like, that's the first thing we're doing. We're getting rid of our culling. Yeah. Yeah. So again, <laughs> we, the whole outsourcing thing, this is how you kind of made it simple for, for us. Um, is something that we've already known about. Like we know, okay, yeah, you, to simplify your life, to free up your time, outsource, outsource the things that you don't need to focus on necessarily, mm-hmm. right? And focus on the things that you're really, really good at. So yeah. I've known all that for a while. It's just that I just didn't know how, Yeah. right? And so we had outsourced in the past and we've outsourced, you know, the with our culling, our editing, mo- yeah. mo- uh, mainly. Yeah. Um, and the issue was, um, for me more so, I, I'm that control freak where it's <laughs> yeah. like, if it comes back and it's not 100%, then I get discouraged and I stop trusting. Yeah. Yes. And that would happen to me all the time. And then what would I what I would do is just basically start redoing things. Mm-hmm. And yes. now that's double the time and I've already paid someone to do it, you know? And <laughs> and it's and that's more like a it's a more on me kind of thing where I, I'm that perfectionist that just wants it to be perfect all the time. And then you had said something in your workshop that she told me about and then I read. You had said um to take to take accountability for it. Yeah, one hundred percent responsibility. Yes. Yeah, and that's where I was like, "You're right. Maybe we're not teaching enough." And you again, it's just exactly like you yeah. had said. Maybe yeah. we're the ones that are not giving the proper uh, information or feedback and whatever it may be. I thought I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought I, I would, and that's why I can't blame anybody else. I, I really do take the responsibility one hundred and ten percent. Good job. That's yeah. a beautiful transformation. Yeah. yeah. That's I felt huge. that. And then and now so what I'm so we started with We started um, with culling. Culling editing. And editing. And it was hard to let go of that, but I started to slowly do it. I found my notes being better mm-hmm. to the people that were culling or editing. Yep. But we weren't a hundred percent we still hadn't a hundred percent transitioned to the uh send it out and get edited yet especially yeah. during the crunch time well yeah. we started with engagement <clears throat> sessions yes that's what we did so during yeah. our busy time while we were overwhelmed we were like okay what can we get rid of right now yeah and we felt comfortable getting rid of engagement sessions because they were like much smaller and yeah it was less and we could handle that so that's what we kind of started with mm-hmm. and then i think when we started getting things back and i was like Wow, that just took me 15 minutes to review. Yeah. Like, yes, <laughs> that was like it just took me 15 minutes. To review. Yeah, and I would that like was the tip. That's when you really yeah. started feeling like that that uh, satisfaction. Yeah. yeah, like I was like, I deserve a treat. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Chocolate. Yeah, because it did, yeah. didn't. It used to take you way longer to review things. Way longer. Yes. Yeah. Way longer. Yeah. Like control freak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even after I would sometimes, review it sometimes, yeah. Julian would like take it and then review yeah. it again yeah. and yeah. spend more hours on it. Yeah. And I'd be like, but I reviewed it and it's perfectly fine. And he'd yeah. be like, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that would happen. So that was. <laughs> 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 so I think that like, if we can that's elaborate from, yeah, that's where it started. And then where it really, really started <laughs> yeah. Yeah. was was over after the Christmas break. Yeah, cuz we cuz it was in October so like letting go of the engagement sessions definitely really helped us. Yeah. But we still hadn't fully transitioned. We were sending some stuff out, but we were also trying to do a lot of it ourselves because we weren't behind our timeline that we give to our clients, but we were like right at the tip. Yeah. yeah. And it stresses us out if we just even go past it by like a couple days or a week. Yeah. And and that was it was getting to that point. Yeah. So yeah. what had happened was we would be doing a lot of the work ourselves. So it was hard to fully outsource as much as we could at that point. Yeah. And then during Christmas, our, usually we take two weeks off in Christmas. Yeah. Once the holidays hit, we don't get back until January 6th. So we're like, it's our time to chill out, relax. Spend time with family. Spend time with family. Enjoy. But this, this year, year, we were a little bit <laughs> right at that cusp, right at that tip where we needed to deliver to clients. So we said, okay, let's, let's take our break. Mm-hmm. But let's work a little bit. We're always going to work a little bit every day. The plan you know? was to work in the morning for like three hours, okay. three to four hours every day. Yeah. 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 But then Christmas day, Julian got sick, got sick. 
So he got sick with the flu. Um, and then he got me sick with the flu. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And then Julian's flu turned into pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Then he had IV treatments for seven days. Mm -hmm. Then he got a blood clot in his arm yep. where his IV was. Oh, wow. So he was kind of, he couldn't do anything. Now everything was left on me. Yeah. He couldn't do anything. Um, so there was probably what? I would say almost a week of us both being sick and not being able to work. Yeah. And then the second week he couldn't move his arm. Huh. So then it was on me. And that's when I was like, I've had enough. Like clearly our bodies are telling us yeah. you're completely overworked. You're not getting enough rest. You're not healthy anymore. Um, like you need to give some of it up. So that's when we just said, we said we gotta screw do it. Do, yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. And we let everything go. Wow. Yeah, so we, we sent out, uh, sent out our culling. We sent, sent out, out our, our editing. editing and fully let go. Like, yeah. but yeah. by that time I, my notes got better. Like yes. I had from, yeah. all from everything that you taught yeah. her in the beginning and I kind of started implementing. Yeah. So I felt like, okay, I'm going to be more descriptive on my notes, whatever yeah. I may be uh, descriptive on. And, and we did, we kind of, you know, selected our favorites that we wanted edited. We yeah. would send it out and we started getting back, getting it back. And actually, no, there was a point when it was gone. I think we had three projects out at four. once. Four? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. We had three or four things out at once. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, that was the, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's was, when we sat that on the couch. Like, wow. Oh my God. Yeah, we were yeah. in our house and we're like, this feels great. This yeah. feels right. We, we had trust. Yeah. Um, and if we didn't, have 110 percent trust i had trust that we can make corrections and yeah. then teach yeah if we needed to yeah and it was just it was that moment that now we're like we're so excited to go into this season knowing exactly yeah. what we had to do oh 100 it's it's now made us aware and kind of opened up our minds to start thinking about okay now that we have this under control what's next yeah. Like, yeah. how else can we make more money? Exactly. What else can we do? What else are we interested in? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. What lights, what lights you guys up the most? Like, what yeah. can you spend more time on? What can you, how can you work less to yeah. just literally live life, have different hobbies, exactly. hang out with more people? Yeah. We oh. get to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> and yoga. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> A yeah. whole new yeah. world. That's and did, did you guys, when was that that you guys were like, okay, we're going to let go of these three, four projects? Was that like when you were sick sick? Yeah. It was, was the last, it was probably the last week of December. I was, I was. No. <clears throat> no, it was like it the first, was week, first of week of January. Okay. First yeah. week of January. Because oh, wow. for total... New Year's Eve, we were in the hospital. I can't even yeah. imagine because yeah. you guys went through a whole season and then you're thinking it's October when you do the outsourcing workshop. They're like, oh, we're so close. Like November, just a little bit of November and then yeah. we have December off. And then it's like keeps going and going yeah. and going. And it's like that's the time you have carved out for yourselves and still wasn't able to be yeah. that way. And like you said, I love that you recognize you're like our bodies are talking to us and they have been talking to us for a long time. And yeah. it's like, okay, right now, do I pick this path of staying stuck in this and just staying on the hamster wheel or do I finally do something about it? Yeah. And you guys did it. Like you guys did it for yourselves, which is like, yeah, huge it's... props to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I can't awesome. wait to hear about like this 2020 season. I I'm can't wait for excited. us to be messaging each other and being yeah. like, hey, so how's your life? Oh my God, I'm seeing the sunshine. We get to go to the beach. We get to like... We'll be have... messaging you. We're like, we're in Georgetown. Let's go for a hike. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. We've created a little like daily routine now that we want to yeah. start implementing, but no, we know that we can now because we know yeah. we have the time. Yeah. So it's literally carved out yeah. time for us and we're excited to actually get started on it. And 100%. do you feel like you guys can uh, shoot more? Like if you wanted to, you yes. feel like you have the time to shoot more and more then bring in more and money. Different. Yeah. More and, and more types of shoots. Oh, cool. you know? like that's, yeah. that's kind of where we're at now. Like she said, we're, we're, we're at the point where we're ready to expand what we're capable of. Yeah. And we're excited for that. And we want to really the, stretch our yeah. imaginations. And The ideas that have been popping in our heads lately. Oh, that's yeah. We're just like, oh. And that's yeah, what happens when you have the space, like, yeah. in your mind to just, like, be. It's like all these ideas come into your mind. Like, if I didn't start outsourcing, I wouldn't have been able to, like, te start teaching and start creating a podcast. And I love photography so much. But I was starting to get, like bored in a sense where I'm I need my mind to be stimulated intellectually sometimes yes so if I was 100%. just shooting and being creative I'm like but my brain is not working like I need to stimulate it so mm -hmm. now it's like I have the perfect balance I have podcasting education and in the summer I'll just be shooting using my creative mind and yeah 
it's just like you can literally have what you can have it all as a wedding photographer you don't have to just be in a cave all the time like yeah, yeah man thank you sarah for giving her life back <laughs> Thank you guys really for doing the work and being action to do that for yourselves, right? Because I was just like, I just gave you the roadmap, but yeah. you guys did the work, right? You gave us the tools. Yeah. The necessary tools. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not just the ideas. You gave <laughs> us the tools, which I think is what I would say was the most valuable. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. Is there anything that's on your guys' mind or chest or hearts that you wanted to share that you could think of? I, that was like such a beautiful story of like your whole process. Like you literally, I love how you told it like a story, like a timeline. It was so great. I um, like telling stories. <laughs> I think I, I just think overall, like this business can consume you any business, any self-employed yeah. entrepreneur yeah. will fall into this, you know, trap of knowing that you can work 24 hours a day. Like it's kind of, it doesn't yeah. leave your mind. So you can yeah. either, you know, work the nine to five job, go home and you're, you know, sometimes your problems are, are done for the, the day. Door. You leave it at the door. Yeah. But when you are an entrepreneur, although you do have more freedom, technically, mm -hmm. you, you just, you care too much. Yeah. You don't stop caring. So yeah. it's, it's on your mind 24 hours a day. And yeah. I just feel like we, we needed this and we're, we're grateful for it. We're, we're excited for the future. I feel like, like you said, we have that space in our minds to create now, mm -hmm. to, to uh, elaborate on our goals and what we want in our life, in our future, mm -hmm. in our business. And I think that's what we're just really, really, really excited for. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't wait 100%. to see your journey. And yeah, just be messaging each other in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's like a lot of people that could like benefit from this. I mean, there's people, we don't have any children, but like there's mm -hmm. people who have kids and yeah. I can't even not, imagine that. Yeah. It's yeah. not just their husbands that they need to spend time with. They need to spend time with their kids and yeah. being a photographer and care really, really putting your all into your business is very hard sometimes. And like you said, can consume you. So I just think everybody can get a lot of value from yeah. this and the thing is that doesn't have to be hard right no right no isn't it, it kind of is, isn't it i don't know how you felt i'm wondering because you know how in the workshop i was like my new ma mantra is uh the less i work the more i make when you first read that were you like how is that even possible um, or, or okay. did you kind of like so no yeah i wasn't like that okay because i'm not naive to that idea okay cool like i understand the concept behind all of that yeah i just um I just didn't have the tools to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was just like, when you said that, I was like, damn her. <laughs> damn her. She's got the tools. Like, where do I get the tools? Yeah. Yeah. Like, give me the tools basically. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, thanks so much for sharing your story guys. Like it's going to inspire so many people to leave burnout, to, you know, nurture more of their important relationships in their lives. Like thanks to you guys sharing your story. It's like a huge impact on people discovering the potential that they have in themselves to live like their dream life actually. So thank mm. you. Thank and you. <laughs> I wanted to ask, well, I want to see, okay, so where can people find you? And is there anything that you want to share with people with regards to any mentoring sessions or anything that you do? Well, yeah, because, well, because now we have our systems in place and uh, yeah. <laughs> we feel like, cause we've been getting asked for many years now, if we do mentor sessions, if we teach and, and all kind of stuff like that. And we're happy to say that this is a goal that we want to implement this year. Yeah. So we will start with mentoring sessions, one-on-ones. Um, and they can find us at our Instagram. It's very simple. It's just Julian and Kelly. I love your Instagram. It's so simple. <laughs> <laughs> and our website is www.julianandkelly.com. <laughs> awesome. And that's about it. We make it pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank so you. much fun. Thank you. <laughs> Guess what? I have some freaking exciting news for you. So I've put together a free masterclass where I let you in on the four secrets to having more freedom and money as a wedding photographer. And that's without breaking the bank or the burnout. I've been working on cracking the code on how to have more free time in my life while still earning my dream income since the day I hit rock bottom with my burnout five years ago. I thought to myself, there must be a way to have it all. And the good news is, 
there is, and I freaking cracked the code. So with my total experience of nine years, 210 weddings, and $900,000 in revenue later, I've discovered the exact ingredients that differentiate a strong workflow foundation from one that keeps you spinning on the hamster wheel of never ending to-do lists, overwhelm, and not hitting your income goals. This brand new masterclass is a culmination of everything I've learned in figuring out how to work less hard and bring in a higher income while doing the things I love most. If you're committed to making 2020 the year you finally say bye to burnout and hello to more freedom and money, I can't wait to slash that learning curve for you and help you get there faster. So to sign up for this free live masterclass, head over to sarahmonica.com forward slash masterclass. But seriously, pause this episode right now and do it. Your future self will thank you. And so will your loved ones when you actually get to spend time with them every wedding season moving forward. And that's quality time. So go to sarahmonica.com forward slash masterclass, and I'll see you there live so you can learn some life-changing secrets, and I can personally answer your questions.